everybody it's patrick the pitch deck we have another round for you guys round three for the cc event that is at gen con definitely a fun event in just the general sense of gen con um, i went only just a couple of days even though i got a four day pass and when you go for two days it's actually way cheaper just to get the four day pass so we have the uh flexibility of going three days if we, in case we want to get something in on sunday but uh going in for round three we have ab3 do coming with sprocket rocket coming at us for three my gopro was slanted slightly down more down than i would want so you'll see a lot of transitions so um and then we get a payload coming in so payloads coming in for six for dominate which is fine um i honestly have three blues i want to be able to use and then use the tome if i can just to block a little bit less um i like the block value for tome out of this entire hand because the value of one or no two resources is better than one extra defense so we find a blue scolding with an ether arc so we send, we're gonna send this in for five which is a juiced up uh, attack and there's only one more card left in hand plus one more resource Oh, that's the thing I like to do is make sure to wait towards the end to see if we can't get that arsenal card stripped if at all possible. So we're just go ahead and explaining some of the rules there. Some some people are kind of new um, and they're just exploring uh, flesh and blood. So there are people that are veterans as well. You kind of see them in some of the events. Ethan was there. Peter was there. Um, so we got some usuals that are... Um, local to my area as well so we're just coming in for aether arc or just telling them about the ponder token um i don't usually keep ponders on me i think i should start putting that into my deck now um but it's not often so again we'll just do six damage and then we'll block a little bit Now that we blocked, we're gonna clean up the clean up the cards here a little bit, and then go on our turn because our turn really isn't gonna be um, too crazy. Sometimes you get stuck with some weird hands, but um, just in, as a mental note for those who are playing Kano and want to start learning playing Kano, even though you may not be pitch stacking, pitch um, organize your pitch as if you were pitch stacking. It's pretty nice you get in the habit of doing it subconsciously so basically um if you did have a stackable hand when you're not pitch stacking just do it it kind of gives you a secondary feel here but we're kind of get to a bit of a, a bit of a weird hand like this is all really good stuff i could set up since he took a little bit of damage um a potion would be nice but then i would have to only a uh, sorry not a b um kano with Three resources i rather would do damage but what happens is i don't want this blazing stuck in my hand because it's not really good to ip with this just because it almost forces me to go into the damage there or the combo already but um he has an arsenal so there is potential of a pretty dangerous turn from dio so don't count out those explosive turns like Alma Findo. Um, so we're just going to send this in for four and over pitch. And we're just explaining kind of like that because he mentioned that he wants me to kind of slowly um, explain because in paper is a little bit different than Talishar Kano. Talishar Kano kind of just shows you everything and maybe a little bit too fast. We're just kind of just explaining just to make sure he knows what's going to happen. So he takes this, which is okay, which is actually not bad. We get full value, but. Um, we would have seen, would have liked to see a better two cost, which would be the best one is Spindle. So he just takes it, raw damage is fine. And then we'll just pass. So being that he's at 22, that's really nice for us because we can kind of use our life as a resource. And which is really nice to see that off the top because we can maybe try to go for that play if we can. Maybe block a little, just set up or use our life, like I said, as a resource the ponder really didn't do anything it's we have we have a really good target if not the best target kindle's fine like kindle's actually probably the better of the two 
So if you have a choice between um, Kindle and Wildfire and Arsenal, I personally believe that you should put Kindle in Arsenal. Only because you're burning Ragamuffin's hat over um, your Stormstriders. If you happen to have three blues with your Wildfire plus Kindle and Arsenal, and then you're flipping off some of the combo pieces on Kano off the top. So with, um, with the Wildfire and Arsenal, we have three blues plus a red flare. Usually this is a pretty good way of just holding until the end of turn to see what they do. And we see a boom grenade. Typically, if you see a more seasoned um, Dio mechanologist in just in general, and they see me taking a whole bunch of damage, especially with a grenade, then they may um, hold back just a little bit. And that's what I kind of want to fish out. Uh, the first few turns was not enough to know if he can tell if the hold back cards and take all the damage is scary or not. Sometimes you may just say, you have it, you have it type of thing. So this is just a yellow zero for 60 coming in with a yellow grenade on top. So this is just six damage, nothing too crazy, but that's still two cards plus an arsenal left. Two cards plus an arsenal can still be okay to see what's left. And um, we, he will get the counter later on for his pistol. I'll, I will point it out to him for the pistol there. Um, So we have Goliath Gauntlet as the other option for the armor piece, just so you guys are kind of aware of the armor suite being that it is pointing a little bit more towards my cards. We get a chest activation, which should be fine. Should be fine. Um, just to let it go, because again, I want to be able to see what the rest of the turn does. If I don't die, I can probably um, send a good bit of damage with three blues plus a flare. So typically that just means that I'm guaranteed a, a two cost off the top. Or like I can play it with some leftover. We have a red zipper hit coming in. So it's def definitely a juiced up arsenal card that you do want to keep. One of their best, if not the best. Oh. Uh, Usually like a, it's a two card 11, but it can be disruptive if it's like a CNC follow up with the two left over. But the two left over is heist actually. So um, I had to double check just to make sure if heist would not be banishing any items, which uh, we are safe for this. This is just coming in for five though. So nothing too threatening for me um, in terms of life total. And we just wanted to make sure everything's good with the pistol. So I remind them. Oh, yep, coming in for two. That is it. Uh, yeah, you're good. And has one floating afterwards because it was four resources, zipper hit plus the heist, but there's no extra card, so that's the only other cards left over. I could have gone there at 22. There is the possibility. I would have seen a tome, but um, I was still a little bit hesitant whenever I went up against my round one opponent. And it looked really, really promising after Spell Void, Ebonfold was burned, turn zero. Um, so I was a little bit more cautious. And I, I wanted to make sure that I had in the back of my mind, Kano first to see if there is more options, keep my options open with this potion of Deja Vu. Um, we do even see a better one with the um, Eye of Aphidia. So again, we need to see one more blue and we'll be really, it would be really good. Not necessarily a bad thing to keep this entire hand or um, our D pot, but we want to see what's the rest of our turn. That's why we, we, we kind of hesitate with the red. Go ahead and maybe clear out. But we do see two more tomes, which is even better indication just to keep the and that we have now played the D pot and set up for a really big ongoing attack to make sure that we do have lethal enough or really big damage turn. So 
So we do make sure that the red is in our pitch or the depot for our later turn. So that gives us more options. Kano is all about making sure you play with your options, you, you, that you do not cut yourself off from any options. You want to keep your options open. Now we have the additional blue that we were wanting. So now we have four blues along with this depot plus two threatening reds along with a, with a tome. So my, my thing is already set of wanting to play this depot just to set up some really explosive attacks. Go ahead and Kano here. You just see this. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, we can still empty our hand as well. We can't empty it that way, so we had to make sure just uh, go ahead and Kano and see what our, our options are. And we see a Kindle on top, which is also really good to know ahead of time so that the the tome can draw into the kindle and we can use it for our turn not only that we would have three banishes along with our eye coming up so that i can sequence the um next two cards underneath kindle if i can um, order it in such a way so we just go ahead and send dart that we have banished nothing too crazy we want to show the depot at the last second so that they understand um, some setup is going to be coming later on, but not necessarily at the beginning. Kind of like in that instance, I want to make sure that 100% that I know that Depot's the best card to play as my action point, and then go ahead and crack it for my um, future combo turn that's going to be coming up. If not, I can just hold off and still potentially play. I'm at five though, so there is the. Um, there is a p potential like zipper hit and hold up three cards type of thing. There is no arsenal, so there's two cards going to be going down if that's the possibility. Uh, so we got a good set on top of the deck. We just got to make sure we sequence it pretty good. We know up to about seven to eight cards because eight would be um, Kindle. However, he goes for the crack here and we will let the turn sequence out and play out, but um, he goes for using this headpiece. He does say that um, it, it may be a stupid decision if he did that because he says he doesn't know what he's, kind of said it to himself out loud that he doesn't know what he's doing whenever he was going for that play, but he follows through with it anyways. So we kind of just fast forward a little bit here. The high octane into bios into pretty much lethal. But there is like, there's pretty much all the cards except for one card left over. So we go ahead and Kano what we know. This is coming in for five, which is exactly lethal. And I don't have um, tunic just to cover up in case we die or we don't kill, I should say. Um, so we go ahead and draw off of the tome the Kindle we saw plus Blazing, which is good because we can sequence this Blazing as our rags target here. But we do need to make sure that we sequence it correctly. Um, we can go with Kindle plus Kano into whatever just to see what's off the top. Um, we can go with Kano with the eye first to see what the effect is before the Kano and then Kindle. If there is a blue on top, it's you can draw it, but this actually having Kindle go first is a little bit more um, of a safeguard of what's going to be coming anyways. Because if we see two reds, we can just bottom one and then banish the other and just hope that there's a blue on top for uh, the Kindle draw. But we do get lucky. We get the blue plus another Kindle. Um, but math adds it up, though, that we are going to be um, in a good spot to play the flare with the blazing plus um, the wildfire from Arsenal, even if we do get a red off of the Kindle. We just want to make sure everything is good. Either order of these two cards doesn't matter, but I just wanted to make sure because um, you can just Kindle 
the, the Kindle draws a Kindle or the Rags draws the Kindle, puts it on top and still banishes. And then the, the second Kindle would still get the blue anyways, or whatever's after the blue, which is um, the sequence really wouldn't matter, but we just making sure anyways. It's never too, um, you're never going to be too sure of a combo turn. So take your time because this is definitely going to be where you could potentially kill your opponent or you die. So definitely don't have your opponent rush you whenever you go through all the sequences, especially with Kindle in your list. So now we're just going to make sure that we explain it to them. We're drawing and we're going to try to empty your hand for the draws. Um, we did draw red, but we can kill through this because of Kindle helping us out with just um, just one buff. Um, we have three resources, the two floating plus the one in our hand. Chess piece will be for the um, flare, but we can probably do... Um, no, we wouldn't have enough resources. We're kind of shy on the spindle. So the flare is the higher damaging line, so um, we're able to pump anyways. Since he destroyed the Visitronic, he's only down to AB1 in terms of what he can present. But um, it is a blue, I think, because of what he has in his hand. It just he doesn't show the um, um, resources left in hand or uh, in his pitch zone, I should say. So it's just coming in for seven, which will be way more than enough damage. But uh, we have seven plus the flare coming in for 10. We knew that the tunic in our mind was already going to be last resource there. So we have seven plus three is 10. And then um, blazing coming in for 34. That's it, guys. GG. We're kind of talk after the math at the end just to see if AB3 would help. And it doesn't. Okay, hope you guys enjoy. This actually would have been probably death even if you kept AB3. I should have done this on my first chain. I think I would have, might, I might have gotten the last five out of you. So it would have been seven, or no, eight, and this goes to five. Okay. Yeah, it's on mine, it's like $800 right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it would have still been dead. What's that? If you didn't crack and you actually had AB3 for the wildfire. Oh, I would have lived. So it would have been like Oh, you're, you're calculating that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, let's see. Where, where were we? So say I had that. It was that, 20. Prevent it three. three. It was 20. The first wildfire. That would have been for three. So it would have been 20 to uh, 15, 8. I think I still would have died. Yeah, you still died. 